on me don't be feeling on me amen keep keep in your space stay in your space and i i guess she felt someone like that towards the lord that she may be violated the lord's face praise god and that she began to tremble amen knowing what she had done 
in her. And she, she came and fell down before him. And he, she told him all the truth. Amen. Told him the truth. Why she did what she did. How she had suffered for so long in her body. Amen. And when she heard that Jesus was coming, she ran out and just felt in herself, if I can just touch you, Lord, if I can just get close enough for you to touch you, because I tried everything else, praise God. The Bible say, amen, the song say, when you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus, praise God. When you're gone, you've done your best, when you've done everything that you know to do, praise God, there's one more thing that we can try, and that's Jesus, praise God. He is the one that can help us, praise God. And she told Jesus all the truth. And you know what the Lord said to her? He said, in that 34th verse, he said, and he said unto her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, praise God, and be whole, or be healed of thy plague, praise God. That plague is gone. Your faith is what did it. Praise God. And we can just believe God for what we need. Praise God. Leave God for what we want. And our faith works not just for ourselves personally, but our faith works for our family members, our church, for other people. If we have faith to believe God, that God's going to fill this house, praise God. I believe if we come together and pray, amen, seek his faith, I believe God even will heal this land, the trouble that we're in now. I believe God will put it aside for a little while. God has worked some things, praise God. Even when we look at Ahab, who's a, a, a wicked king, one of the wickedest kings that had ever uh, been on this planet, praise God. But he, God had pronounced judgment on him, that he was going to, what he was going to do. But the Bible say Ahab humbled himself before the Lord. He went in sight off and cried out to God. And, and God changed his mind. Say, amen. Say, I'm not going to do this to you, Ahab. Amen. I'm, the reason I'm not going to do it to you is because you humbled yourself. Amen. You turned your face. You changed your mind. And I'm going to have mercy on you. And I'm not going to do what I said I was going to do. And praise God. And God didn't do it. I say our faith when we believe God, when we trust God. Faith is not just something that's in your mind a thought that you have in your head, faith goes deeper than that. What faith is, praise God, to trust, to rely on God. Amen. To just not just believe, I believe, I believe tomorrow I'm going to go to church, but it's something that goes deeper on the inside. When you're talking to God, when you're talking to God and understand that he is God and he's able to do all things. Amen. I know he's able to do it and I'm going to ask him to do it. Praise God. The Bible tells us about this man who had a son. He was possessed by the devil. In St. In, in Matthew's 17th chapter, that 14th through that 20th verse. And it said, and when they had come, uh, come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Asking God for mercy. Have mercy on my son. You just don't have to ask God to have mercy on you. You see, you see your children in trouble. You see your family members, your spouses, praise God, and even your neighbor, amen, even your brothers and sisters in the church. We can ask God to have mercy on them. Amen. She's asking, them, say, but Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and so vast, and often he falls into the fire and often into the water. Praise God. My son's in trouble, and I don't want to see him the way he is, it, it hurts me, and I can't do anything, praise God. And he said, I brought him to the, your disciples, and they could do nothing for him, praise God, praise God. I, I tried, to, even the, the religious people, I tried the, the ones that follow you, the ones that are close to you, but they could do nothing, praise God, to help my son. But he decided to go a little further. In life, sometimes you just got to go a little further. Amen. If this don't work, try something else. By all means, don't give up on God. Amen. He's there. He's there. Amen. The test is the trial of our faith. In a, in a little while, just in a, a while when the things are over, God is going to take us through. Amen. And if he don't take us through, often he lets us know why 
he didn't take us through. And we understand that if he didn't do it, it's for my good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's hard to say that things are for our good, but all things work together. When we believe God's word, we're, we're, we're reaching beyond ourselves. Amen. <laughs> things perhaps we don't understand. We're reaching up beyond our mind, our concepts, our thoughts, amen, and our feeling and believing God that if he said all things work together for the good, amen, it's a must that this, whatever it is in my life that's happening to me right now, is for my good. Oh, glory to God, it's for my good. It's for my good. Again, he said, I brought my son to the disciples and they couldn't cure him. And Jesus answered them, an old faithless and perverse generation. How long should I be with you? Well, you know, some people turn around. You calling me faithless? You calling me perverse? Uh, I, I can just go somewhere else, praise God. I can do something else. Oh, God is faithful. And said, uh, said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long should I suffer you? Bring him unto, hither unto me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very same hour. Hey, man, God can do things, amen, right, right now. He's a right now God. He can do it right now. Hey, amen, he can have it done when you get home. I say God is able to do abundantly above what we can thought, think. Hallelujah. The thoughts of our heart can't reach the abundance of our God. God is able to do it. He's able to do it. He rebuked that devil and they said he left in that very same hour. And the disciples, you know, Lord, why can't we do it? Why, why we couldn't cast them out? Why, why we couldn't? Praise God. I say it's your faith. Hallelujah. It's your faith that works in the lives of yourself, in the lives of your loved ones, and your people. We can't come to God without faith. And without faith, it's impossible uh, to please God. Amen. And what is faith? The 11th chapter of Hebrew gives us a good description of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's something that you can't see, but it's there. It's the substance. It's there. It's just like I got this cup, this top of my hand. It, you can't see it, but it's here. You believe it's here. Praise God. That's what faith is. Although I can't see it, the substance is here. Faith is here. Although we can't see it, and it's the evidence, praise God, the evidence that uh, of the things not seen, we have that faith that God is able to do it. And through faith, many people have done many great things, have beat the odds, praise God. Some of us have beat the odds. They wouldn't have never thought who would have thought some of us would be here today, praise God, not just being saved, praise God, but when the doctor said no, hallelujah, when the doctor said it was over, glory to God, God said not so, not so, hallelujah, it's not your time yet, God will give you a snip in your days, if you believe God, you deserve to die, you didn't take care of your bodies, we abused the bodies sometimes, and we deserve what happened. They told us, praise God, not to smoke those cigarettes when we were little kids. And sometimes a person would come up with lung cancer. But I thank God that, amen, they might have felt in their mind. Amen. I smoked these years and, and, and I, I did these things. But I'm asking God to have mercy on me, not because I did de deserve it. Not because I didn't abuse my body, but I'm asking God's mercy because of who he is. Because he's able to do it. And I've seen that, hallelujah, God do some great things. God can heal it. Hallelujah, no matter what it is. I say God is able to heal. God is able to deliver. God is able to set free. He can do it. He can do it. It's our faith, praise God. What do we believe God for? What do we believe God for? So they asked, Lord, Lord why, why we couldn't do it? Say, why we could not cast them out? Jesus said unto him, because of your unbelief. Hallelujah. I can, I can see it. I can see it. It's, it's logical. Some things just look just too big. 
You find, you know, some people, praise God, you're apprehensive to even go near. Some people have a spirit about them. It's a, a, and in the natural, your spirit don't agree with that spirit. And, and you don't even want to, you know, you want to keep your distance. Huh? At least you keep your eyes open, praise God. And so and they, 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 I believe they feared him. I, what he was doing, maybe this man will get crazy and start running and hurting me and throwing me in the water and the fire with himself, praise God. For some reason, they didn't believe God because they were looking too much at the natural and not the spiritual. When you look at the natural, praise God, the natural thing is that we're going to go down with the recession. The natural thing that people would think, praise God, that we're not going to make it. Amen. The grocery is too high. Uh, the, the, the gas is too much. Praise God. They don't even have the cars that we need to make it. Praise God. But when you look at the supernatural, amen, the weapons of our warfare, and we are in a war, praise God, but we have to understand the war that we're in. The war that we're in is not a, a carnal war. The war that we're in, we can't beat with our own hands. There are those that are a lot more shrewder than we are, a lot more cunning. Praise God, then we are. But the Bible says the weapon of our war warfare is not carnal, but mighty. Amen. Through God, it pull down the strongholds. We can pull the strongholds down if we believe God. We can do it. We can make it. We can succeed. Hallelujah. We can be prosperous if we can believe God. If you believe God, all things. I said all things. Hallelujah. All things are possible. If we could believe. If we could believe God. Hallelujah. Again, again, they say unto him, because of your unbelief. Jesus said, For very, I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Lord, give me some mustard seed faith. Hallelujah. And I believe he said that because you don't have to have a lot of faith. You don't have to have a mountain full of faith. You need faith for the moment. You need faith for what you need right now. Amen. When you're looking at too much, you're looking at the whole month. Amen. But when the Lord told his disciples to pray, he said, give me this day. Have faith enough to get through the day because tomorrow it have his own troubles. But we become discombobulated. We become confused when we look at all these things around us. It just hurts us. Amen. But we, when we focus on something, that man, he focused on his son. He focused that I need help and you can help me. Praise God. He focused on what he needed right now. What you need from God today. I'm not talking about tomorrow, but what you need God to do for you today. What you need God to do for you right now. Right now. He's a right now God. Hallelujah. 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 Give us this day. I daily bread. I daily bread. Give me what I need now. And what I need now is a blessing. I need you to heal me. I need you to heal my son. I need you to deliver. Hallelujah. I say it's your faith. It's your faith. Praise God. I knew when I was to be saved. That, when I, that day, praise God, I didn't have a, the, the attitude. Praise God that I might be saved. It was sometime earlier in the week when things were looking pretty bad. And I went to my sister. And I didn't say I might be saved. I said I'm ready to be saved. Are you ready for your blessing? Are you ready to be saved? Are you ready to be delivered? Praise God. Are you ready? And we went to Apostle Ross' home, and he wasn't there. He wasn't there at the time, but I was ready. I was tired of what I was doing. I was tired of what was happening. I was tired of my predicament. I had lost my job. I had lost my car in a bad relationship. Everything had went down. I was just to the bottom of the barrel. I looked like I couldn't get no further down in the barrel. And I found my sister, my sanctified sister. And I told her, I'm ready. Hallelujah, I'm ready. 
And they say, I want to be saved. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you want things for next year, next month. I wanted to be saved, but I wanted to be saved in the beginning. I wanted to be saved when I became an old man, when I couldn't have no more fun in the world. But praise God, when I got ready to be saved, God heard my cry, and he delivered me. I said he delivered me. When you cry out to God, he will deliver you. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that a, a broken and a contrite spirit, God won't despise. When you become broken, praise God. But pride, pride, hold us fight. I'm not going to go down there like they used to in the, in the, in the day. Praise God, slobbering on the altar and, and rolling and rocking and rolling and, and, and slobbering and spitting and, and calling on Jesus. Amen. Sometimes I'm a person to be too saved. Lord, if you don't save me in my seat, I'm not going to get it. Praise God. But sometimes you got to put away your pride. Amen. Because the Bible says pride go before destruction in a haughty spirit before fall. But when you become broken, hallelujah to God, when you become broken in your spirit, when you become, amen, to the point that you're tired of what it is, when you want God to do it, not just want him to do it, when you need him to do it, not just need him to do it, but when you know that I my time, I'm ready for you to help me. I'm ready for you to deliver me. I'm ready for you to set me free. So if you have seed, faith as much as a grain of mustard seed. You say, well, I, I know I got that much faith as a grain of mustard seed. I don't understand the fullness of this, but I believe it means in my spirit, I believe it's a right now faith. I believe that God is not asking us to have a whole bunch of stuff. Praise God. God is not asking us to have Amen. Mountain top in, in abundance of faith. I believe that God is telling us if we can just believe him, just believe him. Amen. And if you believe God, amen, God's going to do the little things for you. Praise God. And that's why we understand the Bible. Praise God where it tells us how we glory in tribulation. We know that God is working. Amen. He's blessing us. He's taken us different places, praise God. It tells us in Jude, I believe the 13th verse, it said, building up your most holy faith. Glory to God, you got to build it up. Hallelujah. You don't start out a lot. Amen. Sometime a person will become saved and they think everything's going to happen all at one time, but it's not like that. Amen. You grow in grace. Hallelujah. You grow in the knowledge of God. You grow in him. And if you got that, amen, mustard seed faith, and you plant that mustard seed faith in the ground, if you put it to work, amen, don't just put it back, amen, it's too small, you can't hardly see it, you just don't put it in your pocket, but you plant, amen, they plant that seed, you plant it, you plant it, amen, and you water it, praise God, you water it through learning the word of God, you water it through applying yourself. You water it through talking to God. You water it through, amen, anticipating that God is going to do it. Amen, that he's going to do the little thing. Just like he saved me. Just like he spoke through me. Just like he gave me the Holy Ghost. I believe God will do all things. Hallelujah, but it's through growth. We grow in this grace. Hallelujah. We grow in this. We have to grow in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That mustard seed faith. And if you grow and plant that, that seed, I believe it'll grow. It'll grow. And it'll grow. Praise God. And that same little seed that grow big enough that you can get under it and find some shade. Hallelujah. Find some rest. Find some shelter. Glory to God. If you have that mustard seed faith, he said you can speak to this mountain to be removed hence yonder in place, and it shall be removed. And it says in this word, it is nothing shall be impossible unto you. Do you believe that today? Praise God, nothing shall be impossible. Glory to God, I say nothing shall be impossible. That's not the saying that God is gonna do everything that I asked him to do. Praise God, but it's, a, it's it, nothing 
Praise God is impossible. There's a possibility that God will do it. And that's how you do it, praise God. You, you go forth in, in praying for people. God don't answer every one of your prayers. Praise God, but God, praise God, amen, is able to do it. And you just keep on knocking. And you just keep on praying. You just keep on seeking God. You just keep on doing it. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. Amen. It's your faith that's going to do it for you. It's your faith that's going to do it. I didn't understand. Praise God. I shared with the church when I was sick and all these doctors and all these hospital stays and how Mother Montgomery, daughter, she recognized me, but I didn't know her at the time. And we were in Watson Clinic. And I was, matter of fact, I wasn't with my primary care physician. I was going to see an, even another specialist, praise God, trying to find out what was keeping my blood pressure so high. I was nine different pills, praise God, that wouldn't come down, just wouldn't come down. Hallelujah to God. And I was feeling bad. Lord, I'm serving you. I, 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 I love you. And, and it, looked like, it looked like I was just couldn't get through. Amen. Couldn't get my breakthrough. And this woman, she, it was on a, on a walker in the corner, and she called me, and, and she called me. Hey, I don't, I don't remember she called me by my name. I'm not, I don't think she did. She called me. Praise God. Come here. She said, come here. I, I want you to pray for me. Come here. I want you to pray for me. Come, come here. And I, I walked over there. Didn't feel like it, but I walked over there. And hallelujah. And she asked me to pray. And, and, and that's what God said. If in his sick money, you call for the elders of the church. And so I had a job. Hallelujah. And that's when you really know, amen, a charge to keep our have and a, a God to glorify. It's not about you all the time. It, it's, it's not about you all the time. Hey, men, praise God. And so I went over and I prayed for this lady. Anyway, I prayed for, amen, I prayed for, I prayed, did what God told me to do. And I prayed for, and it wasn't long, praise God, almost right where Sister Sheila was. This lady, one, one week or maybe a month or so, she came to the church and walked in the church and sitting down. And after service, she wanted to testify. And she, and she brought back to my memory in the midst of the church how that when she was in Watson Clinic, how that I, I prayed for and God healed her body. Amen. Instead of rejoicing, glory to God. It looked like I would have been rejoicing. God healed her body. But it's something about me. Hallelujah. Without me, I was feeling still bad. Amen. I still hadn't got my breakthrough. And I said to God within myself, Lord, you heal her and not me. Praise God. Why you did it for her and not me? But I tell you the word of God, if you just stay there, if you just stay there and don't give up on God, don't walk away from God. You'll, it'll come to fruition that all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord and those that are called according to his purpose. God had a purpose. God had a reason for me to suffer. God had a reason that he didn't heal me. God had a reason. Hallelujah. God had a purpose. Hallelujah. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of reason. He's not just beating us to just beat us. Our God is an abusive God. He's not like that. He does things for a reason. Oh, God, I praise you. And when my day came, hallelujah. You know when my day came? Fourth time in the hospital. My, my doctor was on vacation somewhere. Almost like Ahab. You call your God. Maybe he's maybe he busy. Maybe he's seeing somebody else. Well, my doctor was busy. He was seeing somebody else. He wasn't there to see about me. Maybe he was tired of me just like I was tired of my condition. Anyway, he wasn't there. His doctor came. He didn't know me. He began to ask, ask questions. And he had my wife and daughter to go out of the room and he began to ask them some questions. Then, praise God, afterwards, he had, had them to stay out of the room and he came and began to ask me questions. 
He asked me, he said, do you do drugs? That's a no. Are you cheating on your wife? That's a no. And let's ask personal questions, praise God. Then he said, well, what do you do? And I began to tell him my responsibilities at my, my, my job, my responsibilities at the church, praise God. And then this man who don't know me, he said, no wonder. No wonder you, are, you like you are. No wonder your blood pressure won't come down. No wonder, praise God. You, you're stressed. You, you, got, you got too many irons in the fire. Oh, God, let me put too many irons in the fire so he can bless me, praise God. God let it happen because he wanted to bless me. And he knew that I wasn't going to do it unless I was forced to do it. Praise God. So God took it out of my control. Amen. If you want to be healed, you got to put some things down. Hallelujah. You got to let some things go. Praise God. And so we, when the doctor left, my wife, began to, we began to talk about it. And she began to, amen, uh, she was more for it than I was. Glory to God, that you can retire. And, and I'll put you on my insurance, and we don't have to worry about that. And, and then she went on and said, well, you told me that you was going to retire at 50 anyway. And I was 49, hallelujah to God. And when God did what he did, and when I gave up what I was supposed to give up, praise God, my burdens, praise God. Then I was able to sing the song, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, I feel better, so much better. Since I laid my burdens down, God had something for me to do. And it took, amen, going through the things that I went through to get to the place that God wanted me to be. I said, it's your faith. I stepped out on faith, y'all. And when I stepped out on faith, it looked like that was the worst time in our life, in probably most of our lifetime. It was the worst time since the Depression in 1926 and 27. The economy was the worst that it had ever been. In, in, in 2007, praise God, the housing market, the, the stock fell, everything fell. And I just thought it looked like tons of money, amen, from my IRA. And I, I told God, praise God, I said, Lord, it looked like you, you knew this was going to happen. Why you didn't tell me to take my money and put it in the can and put it in my backyard, praise God. But someone told me. Amen. You don't worry about that. Amen. You don't lose it until, amen, you take it out. And I decided, praise God, and I told God, I say, Lord, if I go down, I'm going down with you. And I stop worrying about it. Amen. And I stop worrying about it. And God took us through. And God, hallelujah, provided for us. And God gave us what we need. Not only did he give us what we needed, he gave us a lot of the things we wanted. And not only he gave us things that we wanted, he gave us things that we didn't even think about. I say God is doing. He'll do it. It's your faith. How much do you trust God? Have you decided? Amen. You might go down. You might go down. But I'm going down with God. I'm going down with God. In my conclusion, back on Mother Smith, amen, it's the, it's the bottom line. All of us have a bottom line. We got to sometimes cut through the chase, cut through the red tape. Hallelujah. Cut through the fine print. Amen. And just look at the bottom line. And Paul's bottom line was this. If I live, it's Christ. And if I die, it's gain. Do you believe God enough? Hallelujah. That if you live, I'm going to live for Christ. Come with me, I'm going to live for Christ. You got to have a made up mind. You can't be wavering in your thoughts. Praise God, you can't waver. You got to, amen, you got to have a made up mind. Regardless of what happens, I'm going to serve God. There's things that God didn't heal me, didn't deliver me from. Praise God, I was born blind in one eye. And Paul cried out to God, said, 
three days, praise God, to, for God to deliver him. But I, I, I believe I cried out to God for 30 years, long time. Lord, I want to see. I want to see. Praise God, it was a shameful thing. Coming up, people would pick at me. Amen. Clarence, the cross-eyed line would be on TV. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And they call me Clarence and all kind of things, praise God. But God even used that for his glory. God was building me up when I was a kid. Glory to God to be humble, hallelujah, in spirit, not to be halted, amen, not to think more of yourself than you ought to think, praise God. But now, praise God, I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah, I can stand on the mountaintop, amen, because I got something to look forward, forward to. If God don't heal me on this planet, Amen. One day, one day, one day. Hallelujah. God is going to do it. Amen. There won't be no more sickness there. There won't be no more birth defects there. Amen. I'll be just like everybody else. But until you do it, I'm going to praise you. Until you do it, I'm going to give you the glory. Until you do it, I'm going to use what I have to do what I can to glorify your name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's able to do it. Hallelujah to God. Sometimes we have to do things a little different. Praise God. Yeah, we have to focus in a different way. My focus isn't like your focus. Amen. I can't put things together like you could put, the, put things together. I can't even draw a straight line on a paper. Praise God. But thank God. God, I'm here. Amen. Thank God I got one good eye. Thank God that he saved me. Thank God he didn't make me be perfect. Amen. Before he saved me. That he would take somebody who was missing a lot of stuff. And he saved him. And he blessed him. And he showed him what I can do. I can drive just like you can drive. Hey, say, my God, I praise you. Can't do it like it is restrictions on my driver's license. But I thank God I got a driver's license. There are those that don't have it, praise God. There's those who can't see it enough to get them. But I got them, hallelujah. I got them. There's certain things I can't do. Certain things I have to have in my car. Praise God, but praise God. Amen. When you look at the good part, we spend too much time. Amen. Moping and groping on the things we don't have, the things we can't do. Praise God, but thank God for the things we can do. I give you glory. I give you, I give you glory. I give you glory. Before I was saved, I, I used to have to cheat on the vision test, thinking they weren't going to give me no license. I, I, I cheated. Amen. To catch him not looking, and I, I read the line. Amen. Then I slip it my, up my good eye open, I read the other line. <laughs> but then the Lord told me not to cheat. <laughs> he delivered me and he saved me. So I began to read the line. And I read all I could. And I'm just looking over there and trying to read. Couldn't read it. Praise God. They, they said, well, you can have your license, but there's some restrictions. But when you come clean, <laughs> it's good to come clean then. <laughs> I can't clean. And God made a way. Praise God, God made a way. And he'll make a way for you and I. He'll make a way for you today. If you can believe, I say all things are possible. If you can believe. It's not that he's done everything I wanted him to do. By, by no means I'm saying that. But I'm saying it's possible. It's possible. All things are possible. If you could believe. Would you stand with me? Yes, Lord. I believe God. I believe God. Perhaps there's someone today that have a need, an urgent need in your life. I encourage you, if you can come down here believing, all things are possible to them that believe. 
We're going to believe with you, just like the man believed for his son, Elder George and I. We're going to believe with you. And I believe if you put your faith together with our faith, I believe that God will do something extra special in your life today. Come down here with something on your mind. Come down here believing God for your salvation. Believe in God for your deliverance. Perhaps you have someone at home just won't act right. Just won't do right. I believe if you come down here believe in God with us for your loved one. I believe God's word He's real. All things, Lord of my strength, all things are possible your word. to them that believe. Would you come? Bright on my tongue, Lord, let my words edify. 